Hello and welcome to The Glittering Bell Jar, a Harry Potter podcast. In The Glittering Bell Jar, we are reading the Harry Potter series backward. So we started last season with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, and we are now in season two reading Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince backward, chapter by chapter. Today is episode 27, and we're covering chapter four. So we are nearly at the end slash beginning of Half-Blood Prince. And I am your host, Valerie, joined as always by my co-host, Bree. And how are you doing today, Bree? Hi, Valerie. Uh, I am good. I'm good. I ran and took a shower real quick, so my hair is... Kind of crazy. I feel like a little bit like Hermione, except for with straight hair. Look at all this, this poof. Uh, other than that, I'm feeling refreshed. How are you? I'm good. Actually, addressing that, people never believe me, but I actually have Hermione hair, like original Hermione hair. I get my hair straightened, mm. so it doesn't mm-hmm. look like that. But when it dries, it gets really fluffy for the first day, even being chemically straightened. And I just really wish there were such a thing as, what does she call it? Sleek Easy's Magic Hair Serum or whatever to smooth <laughs> your hair. Like, that sounds great. Yeah. So I much. actually <laughs> have to like time my washing of my hair to thread the needle between it has enough oil in it that it's not running crazy and frizzy or like it, it's not frizzy and then it looks terrible. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is how frizzy my hair is. I feel for Hermione. That's all I got to say. Well, no wonder you uh, identify as her so much. You have her mind yeah. and her hair. <laughs> and her big front teeth. Oh, <laughs> even if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, but other than that, I am good. It has been a busy day here. And we haven't talked about the weather in a little while. We both tr- we both <laughs> talked offline and we were like, we need to stop talking about the weather so much. But it is a sweltering 90 degrees here in Northeast Ohio again. And so I am a little bit warm. Yeah, that is, uh, that is the problem with being in the places that we are. Although we are not close yeah. geographically, we both live in places that get very, very hot unfortunately yep yep well that it is what it is we record on we continue on (laughs) uh and speaking of let's keep on with the show so if it's the first time that you're joining us thank you so much for joining us make sure that you subscribe in your podcast player of choice if you like what you hear but if it is your first time we do want to advise you to go back and start at the beginning of the season i know that's a lot of episodes to ask you to do so if you want to listen to this episode and then go back and restart you certainly can. It'll maybe give you a sense of if you really like us and you want to spend more time with us, but we tend to reference past episodes. So given that we're reading the book backward, it's like a spoilery time travel back to the future paradox thing always. And it can get a little confusing. I mean, it gets confusing for us sometimes when we talk about whether we're going backward, forward, front end, beginning, etc. So just some advice, start at episode one of the season or start at episode one of last season if you really like what you're hearing so far. And uh, the other thing I like to remember at the beginning of each episode is that we start out by having Brie offer a synopsis of the chapter so you know where we are. Then I will read the last sentence of the chapter, which is how we read since we're reading it backward. And then we will discuss. And we invite you to join us on social media if you want to join that discussion. We will give you all the details at the end of the episode. Yep. Very good. All right. Well, let's jump right into the chapter. Okay. Horace Slughorn, chapter four. Dumbledore and Harry leave Four Pivot Drive and land in the small village of Budley Faberton to convince an old colleague of Dumbledore's to join the staff at Hogwarts. They arrive at a house that appeared to have been attacked. Its door was hanging by the hinges and a red liquid was spewed across the wall. Despite the horrid scene, Dumbledore remains calm and innately pokes a sofa with his wand that turns out to be his transformed colleague, Horace Slughorn. Horace, obviously startled and perturbed, tells Dumbledore he is wasting his time and he will not become a professor at Hogwarts. After a few minutes alone with Harry, we learn that Horace Slughorn loves knowing people, important people, and Harry's mother, Lily, was one of those people. Despite his insistence, Horace runs after Dumbledore and Harry, letting them know that he has changed his mind and will join them in September at Hogwarts. Dumbledore leaves Harry at the burrow after informing him they will have private lessons together during the school year. Exactly. And the last sentence of this chapter is, let us not deprive Molly any longer of the chance to deplore how thin you are, (laughs) said Dumbledore. Uh, Yeah, so that's Dumbledore dropping off Harry, which is what we began with at the, Mm -hmm. in our last episode, episode 26. So as I mentioned, we're already referencing other other episodes. That's why you got to start at the beginning. 
<laughs> yeah, you know what? I love that last line. And I know that's a simple thing a lot of people would know, but the more I read, the more I realize Dumbledore knows people. Mm-hmm. He gets people. He sees people, you know? I think he sees their... Of course, he sees their truest and best self, but I think he sees all of them, which is a pretty cool talent. Mm-hmm. And he handles that knowledge of each person very gracefully. Like even when he sees something that maybe isn't a positive attribute, he's able to integrate it into the conversation. I mean, like the way you could interpret this is Molly is a nagging mom or mm-hmm. Molly cares a lot. And they he's able to say it in a way that doesn't seem like she's overbearing or whatever. <laughs> she's just... She's just going to care because Harry hasn't had enough to eat at the Dursleys, which he never does. Right. Right. Which she just hasn't. It actually eaten. makes me wonder if Molly ever sends Albus letters about Harry. Like, dear Albus, here comes another September. Here's what I noticed about Harry during his visit this year. I could see her doing that. Like her and Arthur reporting back as part of the order, keeping Dumbledore up to date on what they observe of Harry, since he is going to be quite different at their home than he would be at school. Yeah. You know what I thought you were going to say is I actually picture Molly, whether it's at the order or her just like writing furious notes, like letters every single, at the end of every single school year saying, why can't Harry come stay with us? Like, just let him come stay with us. <laughs> I don't care. We will protect him. Like, it's got to be mm-hmm. better than he's probably... Those muggles are going to kill him anyways. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and Dumbledore having to be like, Molly, I can't explain to you why, but he has to go back for at least a f- little while. I'm sorry. We'll get him to you as soon as we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the first thing that I actually wanted to ask based on your synopsis is... I didn't look this up, but I'm curious if Snape is the first potions master after Horace Slughorn leaves, because it seems odd to me Ugh. if you think it through. Snape is now going to become Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. We know that because we've already read that chapter. So Slughorn's going to become potions master. And why would Dumbledore go to, is it just personal preference or is he literally going to the, mo- the most previous potions master before Snape, who's been teaching for quite some time? Yeah, I wasn't, I did wonder um, why he suddenly let Snape have the position. And I was hoping you had the answer. Um, That is a good explanation, as good as any explanation. Or maybe he just thought, I might as well let Snape have it. He's about to die. I mean, (laughs) but no, I I think you're right. I think honestly, he probably was the the most recent um, potions master. And that's just probably why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting to me actually thinking about Snape and his interest in Defense Against the Dark Arts because the class is not Dark Arts. You know, it's Defense Against the Dark Arts, which is sort of contrary to Snape's nature and reputation. And I could only imagine, I was thinking about it in a recent chapter, and we didn't end up talking about it in the episode, how good they would all be at Defense Against the Dark Arts if if Snape had actually been their teacher the entire time. Because he's really good at, at defensive magic and Dark Arts knowledge. I mean, we talked about how that's why Dumbledore always goes to him. And so if he had been their teacher the entire time, they'd all be getting O's in their OWLs going back to last episode's conversation. So I don't know why Dumbledore decided now was the year to let Snape teach. And maybe it was, maybe it is because he knows he's going to die. I don't know why that would make sense, but you know, it's my last year as headmaster because I've gotten myself this curse. So I'm going to give you this job. Yeah. And then you can hopefully keep the job after I die because now you're in the position you won't. Like, if you think about it, if the, if the head boss changes, Snape's probably not going to, to get to then move to the position he wants. So he's maybe moving him within the organization before then. Or maybe it was like, sorry, you have to kill me. I guess you can have the job you always wanted. <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> when I look at trying to hire a new dark, dark arts teacher or a new potions master, it's way easier to hire a new potions master because I know this guy from when I was a teacher. And I know you're really good at Defense Against the Dark Arts. Like, that's always right. an important part of it. <laughs> well, and just maybe Horace wouldn't do it. Maybe he was like, the only thing he knew Horace would teach is potions. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'm he sure had no that. choice. Yeah, I don't imagine. Yeah, I don't imagine teachers go outside the realm of their knowledge. Like, they wouldn't. Unless they were like Hermione where they got O's at everything, you know? Right. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next thing that I got is during this discussion as... 
uh, Harry and Dumbledore are kind of getting caught up uh, is about how mm-hmm. Voldemort is using occlumency against Harry, which is mm-hmm. sort of an interesting idea that Voldemort is having to consciously practice keeping his own mind closed to keep Harry out. Like he's probably never felt that way because nobody else has ever tried to break into the Dark Lord's mind, but Harry accidentally wanders in all the time. <laughs> Right, which makes more sense why at the end of uh, the last book, we it's more painful for Harry whenever he does kind of, um, I don't even say break in, whenever Voldemort, it's like Voldemort is losing power. And I think they mentioned that, but mm-hmm. it just makes more sense that Voldemort was then losing power and why it was almost painful, probably because Voldemort knows that he's like, Harry can probably see what's happening. And so he's mad. And so he's maybe trying to cause him pain or something. I don't know. I noticed that too. And I was Mm -hmm. just like, oh, okay. That makes a whole lot more sense that. Mm -hmm. And that's also why Dumbledore probably was like, okay, you can hang out with me now because he's going to close his mind to you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We know Voldemort's not going to try and come into your mind anymore because it was very painful for him. That's what we learned at the end of Order of the Phoenix. And we know he's closed his mind to you. So you're not accidentally going to wander into his mind and tell him something. So now I can finally start to give you the full picture of what you need to know. Right. Which in Dumbledore's defense does make sense because... Mm -hmm. For one, the end of the prophecy, Voldemort never got to hear the second half of the prophecy, and mm-hmm. um, he and Dumbledore didn't want him to know that he knew as much as he did, as far as all the Horcruxes went. Right, right, so or that sense. Harry and Dumbledore had any sort of personal relationship, because up to this point, I think Dumbledore still believes, and it's probably correct that Voldemort thinks Dumbledore is the greatest threat. Voldemort thinks that if he just gets Dumbledore out of the way, he'll have easier access to just kill Harry. There'll be no one between him and Harry. Mm -hmm. And so Dumbledore is still the greatest threat. And if he can take Dumbledore out or get extra information about Dumbledore by invading Harry's mind and learning that they're close, that would be something Dumbledore is rightly concerned about. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I found a few things, but they were more just like sweet little mentionings. So, um... Mm -hmm. The first thing I noticed was it's just another one of Dumbledore's, the way he makes everyone around him feel calm. And it was at the end of this book, whenever Harry tells Dumbledore, they are, they're leaving the cave and he said, it's going to be okay, basically. And he said, of course it is, Harry. I'm with you. Well, at the beginning of this chapter, Harry asks if they're going to be okay, essentially. He's like, oh, is it going to be dangerous? And he's like, well, possibly have your wand ready, but it's going to be Okay you're with me like but not to worry Mm -hmm. you're with me and I was like oh that's nice that is a nice little (laughs) bit of symmetry I like that I didn't catch that yeah uh and something I it it probably didn't happen but I just think it's kind of funny to think that so whenever Horace and Harry they're actually I didn't explain it very well in the synopsis but um Slughorn is left with Harry because Dumbledore claims he has to go to the restroom. And so they start chatting, which that was Dumbledore's plan all along was to get them to chat. And then hopefully Horace would just immediately fall in love with Harry and want to be close to him. Well, he is gone for, you know, a considerable amount of time, enough that Horace thinks that Dumbledore, you know, has an upset stomach. But he kind of comes back at almost the perfect time. So is he close enough where he can eavesdrop or... I like to picture him mm. going to the Weasley shop and buying the extendable ears. <laughs> and like, he happens to have them. Like I can just picture Dumbledore loving that shop. Like, can you imagine going mm-hmm. to the joke shop and just like loving everything that's in there? Cause Dumbledore has his own little weird sense of humor. Yeah. I also envision Dumbledore being in Weasley's Wizard Weasley's and being like, I'm going to see that and Filch is going to want to ban it. I'm going to see that and Filch is going to want to ban it. Oh, there's another thing Filch is going to want to ban. Okay, now I know what I'm going to get a nasty note from Filch about. Yeah, 100%. Oh, that's that his excuse. Like fun. Like... I should get one of those for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah, that's probably, I don't know whether he would do that magically or if he would just support Fred and George because they're doing something really cool and it's way easier to carry an ear around than it is to worry about doing magic or anything. That's true. Yeah, he would want to support them, wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Did you catch anything else? I did. I have one last Easter egg in this chapter. It is okay. a mention of Dirk Cresswell. So 
if you are a first time listener, now you see why I recommended going back to season one, because we talked about Dirk Cresswell a couple times in season one. Mm-hmm. Dirk Cresswell is the muggle who is traveling with Grip Hook and the other goblin, and I believe Dean Thomas for a time. And he's mentioned in this chapter because he was muggle-born and was collected by Horace Slughorn as one of the excellent students that he knew. And he became head of the Goblin Liaison Office and all this information we know about him. In any case, it is relevant. He gets brought up early. So he's not just some out of left field character that only shows up in Deathly Hallows. He's actually mentioned in passing in this chapter, which is kind of a neat little Easter egg that comes back later. That was nice. Yeah, good catch. Yeah. But that's all I had in this chapter. Okay. Well, on a sweet note, another sweet note I notice is at the end of the chapter, I just like that um, the way Harry describes the burrows and he mentioned it as home, basically. Um, Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm glad that Harry has that, even if it takes a long time, he still does um, have a warm place to go where he feels welcome and safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he finally has a place to go after all those times. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I like that. That's a good note to end on. With that, we will wrap it up. As usual, we have a number of things we like to cover at the end of the episode. I always wonder if people just hear this part and then go, boop, next episode, you know? <laughs> like, I do that when I get to the end of an episode. So if you do that, eh, I, I forgive you. But okay, okay. we'll run through it quickly. First of all, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you leave us a rating and review. Make sure you go to our social media at Beljar Pod on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Follow us, engage yes. with us. Make sure you share this podcast with somebody. Who should they share it with? Ooh. Someone who's like Slughorn. Do you have any friends like that who like famous people? Uh, I don't have any friends like Slughorn in that way, but I have friends who are really big on the creature comforts. So let's say whatever Ooh. attribute of Slughorn you have a friend that's like, you could share it with them. <laughs> okay. Love that. And, do- and you could try and spin it in a way that sounds complimentary. You remind me of this character in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already said, both of us, I mean, you mentioned it, but we both want to be Slughorn at Christmas, so... Heck that yeah. Fine. <laughs> I want a giant mince pie and a velvet tasseled hat and a glass of meat. It's happening. I already have informed my husband. It is summertime as we're recording and we already have a plan. <laughs> yeah, for sure. By the way, making large mince pies is really hard. We made mini mince pies last year. So I think there's magic involved in making a large mince pie. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Molly's magic. Anyway. All right. Yeah. With that, we're going to wrap it up nice and quick. Thank you again for joining us. We will be back very soon with a new episode, and we hope you will be there for that too. See you next time.